Hey there, hey there everybody. Thank you guys once again for pressing play. Today I just wanted to do something just a tad bit different. It's kind of like a testimony and some things that I'm going through and I just really wanted to share how the importance of our attitude is important when we're waiting on God. Um, whatever it is, it doesn't matter my season of waiting on God for a particular blessing or particular blessings um, may be absolutely different from yours. It may be like night and day, but what I have learned in this season it is so very crucial that we go through with the right attitude. It's so very crucial that we go through with the right perspective. It's so very crucial that we go through focusing on God and not on ourselves or our need that we're blinded by what we want so much that we miss every area of growth that God has already orchestrated through this time and season of waiting. So, um, I'm just going to dive right on in there. There are three things that I have particularly um, that the Lord has almost like highlighted for me to speak with you guys on. And I pray that these things encourage you. I pray that they uh, lead you to go to God on your own and to examine your heart. Many times we ask God for things that will only give us pleasure. Many times we're asking God for things that just we want because we want them. But one thing I will say that I have learned in the season of waiting, I've learned to examine my motives and my reasons for asking for things. Why am I asking for this, God? I know I want it, but is this what you want for me? And am I only asking for it to bring me peace, pleasure, or joy, or contentment? Or can you also receive glory from it? for this blessing. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's something that I have to always, always weigh my heart, you know, because, you know, there's a way to each of us that seems right. Just because I want it, it's right, right? But that doesn't mean that it is absolutely right. So I go to God and I say, God, this is what I believe that I should have. This is what I'm asking you for. Now, can you show me if this is what you want for me? And if I receive confirmation from God that this is his will for me but then I also go even further to God how could this what I'm asking you for for myself also bring glory and pleasure to yourself see we ask God for things just for us we want it because we want it right I said that a few times already but that's the mentality that we have we want it and we want it now but I'm learning that if I'm asking for a blessing and I'm asking for a gift that my father is not going to be noticed in that he's not going to receive glory in What's really my motive for asking? Because my what I'm driven by is when people look at doors now, that they don't see the old person, that they see a new, and that new is Christ. Because the Bible says, Behold, the old has passed away. He who is in Christ, behold, the old is passed away and all things have become made new. So you should not see the old residue of the old man. You should, should not see the old characteristics and the selfishness and the pride and the envy and the strife and all those things. And even my prayers should not be vain. Even my prayers should not be selfish. So. I'm just going to dive right on in there. Psalms 37 and 7. It says, surrender yourselves to the Lord and wait patiently for him. So number one is to surrender. I've learned that during this season of waiting and whatever that season is, if you're not in that season yet, trust me, you'll get there. Where you're either waiting or believing in God for something. It's to surrender to his time. And that is something that excuse me, I have realized that has been harder than I thought that it would ever be because, you know, um, my patience is very, very thin at times, but I realize, I have to realize and I have to take a look at myself and realize that he, he's God and I'm not. So his timing for me is better, you know, and he'll keep me in a place and a position for a while um, to grow me and mature me and to develop godly character, to develop in endurance and, um, and, and, and perseverance. Those things are so much more precious. So I know that in surrendering to his timing, surrendering to his word, his ways and his will. I know that when that time comes for me to receive the blessing, that I will not go haywire and mess everything up. I know that I will continue to stay submitted, surrendering to his will. So Psalms 37 and 7. Number two, it comes from 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. And it says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So number two is my attitude. 
My attitude has to be on point during these times and seasons of waiting on God. I think of the Israelites, and I use this example a lot. We think of the Israelites and how they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They could have really got there in a matter of days, but because of their ungrateful hearts, because of their discontentment, because of them wanting to go back to what was comfortable for them, they murmured, they complained, they did not even acknowledge the fact that God provided for them. He fed them, he clothed them, he didn't allow their clothes to wither he didn't allow their shoes to be become destroyed but that wasn't enough for them they complained because they did not have what they wanted they didn't have the blessing in the time or the way that they thought so their attitudes it kept them from receiving the promise of God and being able to go into that land flowing with milk and honey so I have to examine myself and make sure that my attitudes and my motives are pure when I'm going through seasons and times of waiting again first Thessalonians 5 and 18 lastly is to be content <laughs> first Timothy 6 and 6 for godliness and contentment is great gain Contentment is something that you have to consciously, intentionally pursue each day. We all have reasons and opportunities to complain. We have things that we can talk about. We have things that we can say are not happening in the time that we want to happen and on and on and on, bring out the violin and, you know, but really what it does is it, um, it shows the ungratefulness in our heart. I realize that waiting on God for whatever reason it is, whether it's a financial breakthrough, whether it's elevation spiritually, or even in your own uh, career, whether it is deliverance for a family member, healing for yourself, uh, praying for a, a ultimate blessing for a spouse or whatever you have, I realize that it is a honor and a privilege to wait. And to going through the season of waiting is really, really, really important because what God is doing, he is fine tuning the heart. He is fine. He's, he's picking up everything that is not of him. He's taking out everything. He's taking out the old and he's giving you the new. Because the Bible says those who are in Christ Jesus, the old has passed away and behold, all things have become made new. So being discontent is things that I, the old nature, embodied. So now I had to ask God, just like in Romans, it says, do not conform to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I have to go to God and ask God to renew my mind and I have to go in and seek him in his word that my mind can be transformed and renewed that I do not conform to the old ways and the customs and traditions of this world and that I can be content in all things for godliness with contentment is great gain and I will take it over all the riches in the world I pray that this short video is helpful to you guys um I'll say that I'm just so grateful to be in this place where I see the hand of God moving. It's kind of like you're you're not quite there, but you're not where you used to be. And it is so, so, so liberating. It is such an honor. I give glory to God for keeping me. You know, um, years back, I wouldn't be able to sustain um, and I wouldn't be able to walk. I didn't think I was able to walk righteously. I didn't think I would be able to live a pure life and no longer compromise, but who the sun sets free is free indeed, you guys. So it is so important that your attitude, that your attitude stays in a good place, that your attitude is pure, that your attitude and your motives and your mindset and your focus is focused on your father and not the timing. Oh God, please don't pay attention to the timing. That has been a huge battle of mine. If I pay attention to the timing and I look at things as how they are today, I can get a little sidetracked. Then double-mindedness or fear or doubt, uh, whatever it is, it creeps in and even a little bit of resentment, asking God, why? I'm doing everything thing you asked me to do why am I not blessed yet that makes me no different from the Israelites see they had a promise God told them that he would just show them a land and they would be able to go into a land flow or milk and honey and it was available to them but because of their ungrateful hearts it kept them from them it kept them from that ultimate blessing which was absolutely predestined for them but because of their ungrateful hearts they stayed in the wilderness until the ungrateful ones died off and their children's got a chance to see what they should have 
had every opportunity and privilege and freedom and liberty to see themselves. So I just wanted to share that, that our attitude while we are waiting on God is so important. So do a self check. I do it daily. You know, um, we, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And we know that although we are new in Christ Jesus, that we all have flesh and the flesh is willing, but the spirit is weak. And so it's a constant battle against the two. They are always at odds. They're opposing each other. And one is contrary to what the other wants. But you have to have a sound mind. And if you have a yes down, anchor down in your heart, I like to say, nothing will be able to sway you away from God's timing, God's truth, God's principles. You stay anchored in the truth. And I just want to encourage you to continue to wait. Wait in, expectant, in, in, in a spirit of expectancy. Wait in faith because we know that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So I pray that this video has enlightened you. I pray that it has given you some encouragement. And I pray that it, it leads you to go to God and ask God to examine your heart and the true intent behind your reason for asking for things in prayer. Make sure that you are asking for things that God wants for your life. Because many times, I realized that my frustration came from I was praying and asking God for things that he did not ordain things that he did not want for me and I would get upset when I did not receive those things but it was not God's will so your perspective is a huge part of that I'm gonna add four on to that your perspective and your understanding needs to be godly and not selfishly or not uh, fleshly or carnal so make sure that God is pleased Make sure that you are focused. Make sure that you're going through and not trying to pass step two to hop to step 10. You need to go through every detail. I've realized that God has been allowing things to unfold in my life. He's showing me the hidden things that I wasn't even aware, the, the struggles and the battles that I had myself. And I thank God for the opportunity to correct. The Bible says that he chastens the one he loves. So in God correcting me. He loves me, so he's going to bring about a, a correct or a, rebu a rebuke. So I thank God for the opportunity to continue to grow and to wait. Because they that wait on the Lord, he shall the renew their strength. I pray grace and peace to each of you guys. God bless. I'll see you next week.